The government of Rwanda targets a 17% annual export growth by 2024 under the National Strategy for Transformation. One of the ways to drive this goal is export diversification. Today's doing business in Rwanda looks at the essential oil sector, which is small but promising and has the potential to grow exports. Welcome, my name is Stephen Mvonyi. A three-hour drive from Kigali was destined for these green fields located in eastern Rwanda. They belong to Ikirezi Natural Products Limited, a social enterprise that grows essential oil crops from which it produces organic essential oils. Dr. Hitimana is the pioneer of the crops, which he has been involved in since 2005. We started in 2005 indeed, and it has been a long journey because this is a pioneering work. Um, in Rwanda, we have never done essential oil at the commercial, um, at the commercial step uh, since, you know, after independence. But the good thing is that we've been able to produce um, high quality organic oils like geranium, patchouli, lemongrass, uh, eucalyptus, which is, uh, we harvest um, um, on, on where the, the right variety is, even now Tajetes. Recently we've introduced another crop called Lavendin. It's a new crop as well as Rosemary. We have a very good team of uh, technicians, um, agronomists, who train our farmers. They work with them every day. So they teach them agricultural techniques. They support on-farm, on-job training us to make raised beds, as to how to plant, as how to maintain, um, you know, good crop husbandry. They are there uh, uh, training the farmers on a day-to-day -day basis. So along the way, the key thing really for us has been uh, the impact we've been having on, on the poor people, the widows, the orphans, the very poor people in the rural area. We've been working with this category of people and providing opportunity for them to work. Despite having had considerable success, Dr. Hitimana's journey has not been free of challenges. He laments the fact that lack of raw materials such as electricity rendered this 250,000 US dollar worth processing plant inactive since acquisition in 2009. It can actually handle material from 100 hectares. And as I told you earlier, we have only 30 hectares. And we've been using small units. You, you, you will see them or you've seen them down there. And this unit, we installed it in 2009. And because we didn't have enough raw material, it has been lying idle. Uh, not enough material, but also the problem of electricity. S Oil Limited is another agribusiness that has ventured into essential oils, growing different crops at a land of over 300 hectares in Kayonza district. This demonstrates investors' growing interest in the sector. Essential oil industry is a new industry in Rwanda, but uh, three years back in 2015, uh, our shareholders started the company starting from agriculture in Kayunja district. We have a farm. Total capacity is around 117 hectare. Out of that, uh, 40 to 50 hectare we already started the cultivation. So basically their goal was only geranium oil, which I explained one of the most expensive oil. But slowly there are a lot more than 100 and 200 essential oils used in flavor and fragrance industry. So they selected three oils as per the agroclimatic condition of Rwanda, patchouli, geranium and lemongrass. This dam supplies water across the farm via canals. Irrigators then use rain guns, pumpers and hose pipes to keep the crops refreshed. Matching is also applied to some crops such as geranium. This is just a small part of the hard work that essential oil farming requires. On top of this, there has to be extensive research prior to cultivation. 
Rwanda's climate is largely viewed ideal for essential oil farming. So you have to do a lot of uh, R&D, research and development, in terms of knowing what type of crop to grow, how to uh, process the oil, the extraction of the oil, how to train farmers, even to know the best place to grow the crops. The climate, the suitable climate, because for this growing aromatic crops we need uh, continuous irrigation, we didn't need a hot climate or very cold climate, moderate climate. So Rwanda we can see still the rain is going, so uh, the average rain fall condition is better and uh, there is no very frost uh, who can damage the uh, leaf because essential oil crop is a sensitive crop. Used as flavors in food and beverages, fragrance, pharmaceutical and aromatherapy among other functions, essential oils demand is very high and according to those familiar with the sector, its profitability is beyond question. The demand on, on international market is, is, is very high. Uh, I could say for instance geranium annually we are, we are looking about 300 tons of, of oil worldwide. For patchouli it's even more. We are talking about more than 20 tons uh, a, 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 a year. So, so this is a huge, huge market and um, because the flavor and fragrance industry is a never growing industry, uh, actually the, the, the growth is about 10, 10, 10 percent an, an annually. A few campaigns, we go around and uh, you know, do promotions, uh, attend trade fairs and we also do um, other things, other sales like at events. So those are the things that we do to make our products known. I use a lot of uh, essential oils at home, uh, and then I just, uh, you know, the quality of the product here is, is very nice, and the price is very nice. So yeah, why not? Yeah, and it's good to support local uh, business. I would say we've been doing well financially in terms of uh, the gross margin we're getting from our crops. Obviously, as it's a growth business, we needed more land to be able to cover all our fixed costs. And uh, fortunately, it is coming. We've got a land lease here, and uh, currently we are looking for more investment to introduce drip irrigation. So uh, I call it lucrative because of the end market. So when you look at the end market of essential oils, is for those people who can, uh, I can say, uh, at the high class. It's not uh, like a, a household, uh, you know, you know, consumption uh, or, or products. It's, it's always uh, has to pass through the industry, uh, through different technology, and then you produce high value products for uh, for the that end end users. And again, when you look at the price in terms of pricing, uh, is where maybe you can talk, we can call it uh, lucrative because uh, the final product is very expensive. The demand is huge because. Essential oil application is in flavor and fragrance industry as well as pharmaceutical industry. In Rwanda, our objective to motivate the organic farming because nowadays all people are very conscious about their health. They doesn't want to use the more allopathic things or uh, the things which have a lot of chemicals. and. Uh, they want to use naturally grown thing and organic things. So nowadays in uh, Europe and US, people are very keen to use organic products in cosmetic also, in uh, their routine life also. So a lot of companies came from last two, three years as an aromatherapy industry or they are using organic and pure essential oil for their products and they are get with very good value. After realizing the potential in essential oils, the government started to encourage its growth by creating cooperatives across the country. The target is to increase exports from the sector to six million dollars in 2024. Essential oils uh, is the new value chain, uh, I may say because it started here in the country in 2006 under trials. 
uh, through Ikirezi Natural Products uh, Limited. And then after uh, testing the different uh, crops like uh, geranium and patchouli, we found that it is worth to continue uh, its development and uh, maybe introduce it to uh, small scale farmers. Uh, currently, uh, essential oil uh, is dominated by small scale farmers uh, mostly, uh, but uh, grouped into cooperatives. We have seen some uh, some growth currently. Uh, we are exporting uh, about you know 11 metric tons uh, of essential oil uh, with the value of um, um, half a million dollar. So, but uh, when you look at now the investment we are doing, uh, we, we are projecting to to increase maybe by 2020, 2024 to go maybe to reach uh, six million USD every year. Rwanda has been relying on traditional exports such as coffee, tea, and minerals. The government is now looking to tap into new sectors as well as work on value addition on existing exports. It's not only valid for Rwanda but for all African countries. How do we, you know, move away from our traditional exports, the raw materials, be it, you know, coffee, tea, or minerals? Um, diversification for Rwanda has already started. Uh, if you take, for instance, in, in one of our growing exports is, is horticulture. Last year we exported 27% more uh, in horticulture, bringing flowers, uh, vegetables, uh, than the previous years. Um, now we have to, to have you know, uh, more scale in that sector, but it's a sector with a lot of potential. Uh, I think we all can also mention, you know, essential oils, which, you know, are also being exported. This is new in our exports. So this is, you know, um, a few examples of, of exports that were not, we didn't have 10 years ago that are starting and picking up. So uh, we're confident that, you know, uh, we will continue on that track and, and have more uh, products, made in Rwanda products, manufactured products being exported, but also on the traditional export, having more value addition and exporting, uh, you know, value, I would say value added products, but processed products, uh, you know, uh, instead of raw materials. And that's all on today's episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. Remember to send your feedback on email, dbiro at abn360.com. Tweet us at DBI Rwanda or myself at Stephen Movunyi. Thanks for your company.